Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the industry and share with you what we have learned from them and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Before we get started, I want to ask you something. Are you looking for a community of professionals that are looking to share, learn, and grow where you can talk openly and freely about the highs and lows in your business? If so, I want to invite you to check out my inner circle at AngelaProfit.com slash membership. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Prophet, and thank you so much for joining me today on another episode of Weddings Unveiled. Today, I am super excited to talk with Megan Ely. Megan is the owner of OFD Consulting. Megan, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here. Yay. So for Yay. our <laughs> new listeners that don't know anything about us, tell them what OFD stands for. Oh gosh. Well, <laughs> that's, that it's kind of like what we do and then what it stands for. They're, they're a little bit different. It's funny. My husband says I need a better, more interesting story about the origins of my name, but OFD <laughs> itself is uh, we are a wedding PR firm. So we basically, I like to tell people we see the best in the wedding pros and brands that we represent and we make sure everybody knows about them. So we're helping them book speaking engagements. If you've got a media outlet like Martha Stewart weddings that needs a quote on whatever, then we want our folks to be the ones being quoted and speaking and on podcasts as well. And so that's a little bit about like, that's what we do kind of in a nutshell. And we've been doing that for almost 10 years. I can't believe that. And then OFD itself with it, like giving you the very, very shortened version is I started in college wanting to be in a wedding planner. And I like literally did a senior project and Nate said I was going to be called one fine day wedding oh, planning. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. Well, you're sweet. Like when I try to tell it to uh, at a cocktail party in front of non wedding people, they're like, Oh, okay. But you know, like it's it not, not that interesting. But then I got into weddings and I actually worked in weddings for years. And, and over the years, as much as I love that side of that and had a, so much, you know, respect for those who continue on to be planners and be wedding pros for me, I wanted to jump on the consulting side, but I had to change the name of that. I was very stuck on doing some sort of shout out to it. So I, I switched it to OFD consulting and, and, um, my business coach has hated the name ever since, but that's okay. Cause he's like, doesn't even make sense. And I said, don't worry about it. <laughs> that's what we're going to do. Next. It's a great story <laughs> though, because if you think about like how most, I'm not kidding you, almost 99% nine percent of people that I talk to on just every day and on this podcast, it, mm -hmm. it was like, you know, they thought about this or they did their friend's wedding, you know, it was just kind of an accident, but I don't think you need a better story. Like, I think that's yeah. cool that you, Oh, you're followed sweet. your heart. Thank like, you. I was like, <laughs> you never gave this is what up I'm on gonna that. Do. I love it. Yeah. And it's funny. I go back and speak twice a year at my alma mater. It's one of the things I like to get back. And I always joke, I like to you know, scare all the seniors about the real world. But I've been back in the room where I made the decision, like this graphic design room, all these like Macs are in there. And I, and I can point to the seat where I said, that's when I knew I was going to be in the wedding industry. So that's a true story. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, so just your whole background about how you got into the industry. Yeah. And what I mean, obviously you said you went to college and you thought about it, but back when I think you and I went to college, which for all of our listeners, Megan and I, I've I feel like I've known Megan for years and years and years. Yeah. From like but we but we really actually don't know. <laughs> 
virtual friends. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I saw, I've seen your name and your picture. Mm -hmm. And every time you were at a conference, I couldn't come see you speak because I was teaching something or, you know, doing sure. something at the same time. So mm -hmm. I, while I know I'm very familiar with you and your company, just where the background came from and what sure. you're doing, where you're going, like, I'm excited to like hear more for myself and then for our audience. Yeah. And it, isn't it funny what social media does to us? Yes. Cause I'd be like, you know, I might know you to the point where I know what you had for lunch yesterday, which I mean, I didn't, but you know what I mean? But then it's like, <laughs> we technically have not. Yeah. Um, so my start, I, I have a degree in public relations. Okay. I went to Madison University purposely for a degree in PR and loved it. But there was this moment and it was really funny where I really thought, you know, the wedding industry and I can't, I, you know, outside of being one of those like classic bridesmaids at 12 wearing very puffy sleeves in like the late eighties, like that's my very limited, but fabulous, you know, entry into the wedding industry. Yeah. But I thought to myself, it seems like a fun industry, seems like lots of happy people. And, you know, I kind of want to test those waters. And so I continued on with the purpose of one wanting to make that dive in and not really sure at 20. I mean, I didn't know how to do anything at 22 at let alone really make this a career. And so what I did is I tested the waters, you know, I graduated, I worked at the Nike world headquarters in Portland, which was fun. That's um, cool. I, yeah, it was awesome. If I had had this, if I, I have huge feet, if I had sample size <laughs> shoes, it would have been cooler because I would have had this collection of shoes forever. But, um, and then I did a year of AmeriCorps and I always tell people that cause I really wanted to like give back work with children. And that was a kind of another, you know, pull for me. And so, you know, I did that, but in the meantime, when you're in AmeriCorps, you just, you don't, you literally make almost no money. And so I, I, I all, I got, not to brag, I got turned down for a wedding job, but then I got, Aww. I was a set. That's okay. Um, I interviewed from Portland, Oregon, and I was number two on the list, but then the number one person didn't take it. I happily jumped in and said, Oh, I'll take the job. Yeah. And I worked for, yeah, historic estate part time. So imagine it's like full time with kids all day. And when they get out at three, I would spend several days a week and all weekend doing these great weddings at a historic property. And it was volume. I mean, it was four weekend plus eight birthdays. And when you're 22, 23, you have this energy that comes out of, I mean, I don't know where that, I don't have it anymore, you know, but I did at the time and that turned full time. And then I, I stayed with it for a bunch of years. I, I probably did about a thousand events, corporate, social, most notably, I spent my time at a, um, I spent my time at a five-star property and, you know, it just came down to the point, and I know you've talked about, you know, I enjoy listening to your podcast and hearing about going for your passion. And really that was my story too. As much as I loved being at these weddings and events, and I loved doing holiday parties, at the end of the day, you know, I could have done this huge thousand person holiday party and it was amazing and well executed. But then we would get a mention in the paper, like back in the day, you know, in the newspaper. <laughs> and I felt like I won an Emmy. You know what I mean? I felt yes. like that was the greatest moment of my life. And so I said, you know what? I need to, I need to continue to do that. And also, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, it was like, I'm surrounded by all these amazing creative professionals and entrepreneurs who frankly, they just want, they want to do their job. They want to do what they love to do. Cakes, planning, owning that venue, lighting, music. They did not want to deal with the business side as much. No. Um, and yeah. And there were some great resources like what you have now. And so I went out on my own nine and a half years ago. Um, it's a longer story that would require you and I to sit down at a conference and have some wine and I could really dig into like, I left my last job. I started a few two years earlier, but we're not, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to, we got to do we, that at wedding and VA. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm completely sober right now. So we, we won't go through that whole <laughs> Story, but in Vegas, I yes. will. Yeah, so I started OFD nine and a half years ago, and, it, and like everyone's, you know, job, it evolves over time. Media landscape has changed so much since my early days of just, you know, of doing mainly real wedding submissions. But these days, people want to be everywhere, and so I, I think I spend about seventy five percent of my time doing that, and twenty five percent of my time, like you, traveling and, and being an educator. So I, I tend you can find me at most conferences, and I'm also a wedding wire education expert. So you you guys probably see me out and about doing podcasts and webinars and things like that. So that's that's a big background. Yeah. <laughs> No, but it's awesome. It's like, I feel like um, those of us, because we're a small pot, I, th I feel like that, that we brew <laughs> where yes. we've, you know, I've had people say, you're such a disruptor. I'm like, I love being called that because. That's yeah. Okay. Needed, but, it's different. <laughs> and, but we're just, it's like taking what's needed and then 
if you have a passion and then you fill a void, you know, and you said it perfectly, like those of us who are creatives, we don't want to do the business side. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't want to do the business side. However, I surrounded myself with really good people. Thank God. It took a little bit to find them though. And, um, who actually genuinely wanted to help take care of the business and see me grow. And mm-hmm. so after they educated me, cause I didn't know what I didn't know. Then I was like, Oh my God, like all the creative people need to hear these things. Like I would make really stupid decisions, but I didn't know they were stupid because I didn't know any different and sure. I went to business school. And now with like, I want to talk a little bit about, cause you mentioned it a minute ago about how like the wedding media landscape has changed and with all the you know, it's like, I feel like every day I roll out of bed and there's like some new (laughs) new software and it's like just coming in and out. And for newer professionals or even professionals that, I mean, I work with a lot of people that they've been, they've been in the business 25 plus years. They're over 50 years old. They're Mm -hmm. so overwhelmed with all of this new stuff. They don't know what to do. So if you can give us a snapshot into how has the wedding just the landscape changed over the years. Absolutely. And it's so funny because you see you wake up and so it's like, girl, I same with me. It's always on a really busy day where I don't have a moment to breathe. And then it's like, so me pretty's closing. <laughs> where you're like, what? <laughs> yeah. You're like, but not today. I have a webinar. Right. And, and so, no, so much has changed the industry in the last 15 years. I've had the pleasure of being in this industry and then also the media as well. So on the wedding side, and I, I, I'm sure I'm preaching the choir here. First of all, the oversaturation is added. An unbelievable. <laughs> right. You know, you mm-hmm. have um, when 2008, 2009 hit, it was the era of not good feelings and people were getting laid off. And then they were planning their wedding and saying, oh, no, I'll be a planner and I'll do this. And so we we saw this lower, lower barrier for entry. Um, and with that, we're seeing an increase in, in, in education, the good, bad, and the ugly, to be honest. Yeah. I, and it's, you know, and so more more people are diving into the industry. So that saturation, we never saw that DIY like fervor go away after the economy because there's some companies out there. Actually, they do a great job, you know, kind of fostering that. There are people who want to be kind of hands-on and that affects the industry in different ways. And and of course, marriage equality has a, in a great way positively impacted how we do things in that push for custom you know, personalization. So you've got that side of it. Now the media is like this whole other ball game where, you know, I first got started almost 10 years ago and one of my clients mentioned Sell Me Pretty. I'm like, what's that? I mean, legit. I was like, I don't even, it's like now a mega house. But I remember I finally, when we finally got the homepage of Sell Me Pretty, a feature, we, I took my husband out to, to dinner on me. I felt like such a, you know, <laughs> it was really, he's my web designer too. So it, well, at the time he was, I was like, well, this is, this is business. So at least that's what I told my accountant and, um, you know, (laughs) write it off. (laughs) Yeah, I didn't write it off. But the media landscape has changed so much where there's a tremendous push towards online. The, for every, you know, increase, we talk about increase in seeing all these planners and and photographers will same on the blogger, you know, editor side of things. I mean, everyone's starting a blog, even to this day, I I figured we had run out of URLs at this (laughs) Like go daddy's like, no man, we're full, but, but there's more and more and it could, it's the good, bad and the ugly. And so you get some really great robust sites that could become these wonderful marketing solutions for wedding pros and real wedding features. And everybody wants to be featured. Um, and then, but you're also seeing just an utter saturation now, right now, you and I, of course, are recording in 2018 and this has been a tremendously strange year. So we're already seeing this push for online as evident by, you know, Martha Stewart wedding print clothes. Thing. You've got Sell Me Pretty almost closing and now staying and sticking around for now. Um, you're seeing places like well loved blogs like Snippet and Ink closing, but then you're also seeing, you know, of course, the news of mergers like the Not in Wedding Wire. And so online, the, the biggest thing I see, I feel like as an outsider, if you will, is how are we going to catch the attention of these couples? And we're seeing a huge drive towards um, the rise of niche. You know, I'm really digging seeing, you know, these wonderful sites that, yeah, maybe not everyone's going to get the style made pretty traffic, but they go very much after a niche audience. And it's, tr- it, you know, those are the ones kind of rising the cream of the crop, the LGBTQ, you know, the lovings of the world, the Maharani's on the South Asian wedding side. And so I love seeing that. 
that. Um, we're seeing print sh shut down. There's still a few robust print print shops out there, print magazines, but yeah. there's not a lot of them left. I mean, I, I remember being at Engage and then I get home and I just talked to Martha Stewart Weddings at had questions about print submissions and then suddenly it's done. I mean, it's all with, you know, like you said, Angela, it's like you wake up and it's changed. So we're seeing that and we're also seeing a lot of editors really putting their foot down saying, you know what, I'm not making money the old fashioned way anymore through advertising or sponsorships. And now we're seeing more sites turn to a pay to play model. So a lot of our like beloved sites we used to submit to all the time no longer accept our submissions because you know it, and you know there are opinions on both sides on this but unless you advertise with them you're not going to be considered and so a lot I'd say 2018 is one of the most significantly you know changing years for us um, which is why on our side we're we're always encouraging people to diversify to, you know, speaking engagements and podcast interviews and being quoted in things versus always getting that real wedding feature. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so you've got to evolve with the times. So that's what we're seeing. Yeah. I mean, you have to, and it's, it's funny because um, if you don't stay up with what the world is doing, you're gonna eventually die out people you are <laughs> period period there's a couple yeah. of funny things to say so pay to play i think i've heard that 10 times this week and i think yeah he's like uh, i think it's like a wednesday or so i don't even know what today is but <laughs> i, don't know what I wake is. up every day this week thinking it's a saturday i am not the girl to ask <laughs> what so day the week is. it's like someone said to me um you know, I have a interesting whole pay to play, I guess, a, a different way of reframing. And so mm -hmm. someone had reached out to me to be on the podcast, um, you know, which I loved what mm -hmm. they were about. I love their niche as you, you know, said that yeah. you said some really good hot keywords. And so we have to be on the podcast. There's certain things. You know, we have to make sure that it goes along with our brand, which sure. this podcast is for education and to give people tools and to, again, educate them on what's happening. The good, the bad, the ugly. I'll talk about anything. Um, it's not to gossip. It is to be leadership of this industry because we've been doing it for a long, long time. And so she reached out to me and I'm like, yep, that's great. And my, my communications director sent her some information and said, you know, here's the, the things, if you'll fill out, you know, this document that will help us understand how we can best let our audience know what we're talking about. And we also want to make sure that people have actually heard the podcast yes. and they think it, it's good and leave a review and like, let us know how we're helping you as well as how you can help other people by leaving reviews. And yes. she said, well, she emailed back and said, well, that's just a pay to play. And I said, you know, I'm really sorry that you see it that way. I see it as we all support each other. And to me, if you're going to be a guest on a podcast, but you don't listen to it or review it and you don't support it, that's sending a mixed message to the audience. And it is in my experience. Absolutely. And so I feel like, again, the, the oversaturation of these keywords that vendors and newer people who haven't been around for 16 plus years, um, cause we've been around for a while. Um, uh -huh. you know, you learn these things and then I, I know like over the last few months I've been getting a lot of submission emails from companies that are like, oh, can you help me as an influencer with this? And can you help me with an, you know, and I'm like, yes. However, I need to do a little bit of homework. Like, is this something yeah. where I would say a lot of uh, resorts do it now? And so I'm like, which used to be called fam trips. Now they're called influencer <laughs> trips. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Isn't it Give funny? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, so maybe, but I need to know like a couple things. Like I don't see this as getting any value of, out of a free trip. 
And it's like, and some of them, they really need to hire you, Megan, because they, oh, you're sweet. <laughs> they, don't, um, they don't give clear expectations. It's like, okay, so we're, we want you to come on this trip. That's a value of $10,000. But in order to do that, we need three blogs and 15 video for content and this and that and hashtag this and da, 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 da. And if they had a, if they had a PR firm that they were working with to have strategy to track the ROI, which is return on investment. So if you have Mm -hmm. five influencers coming and let's say that's a $50,000 value, if you book one luxury wedding, you're probably going to make your money back. But that's, you know what I mean? It's like, so it's so different now. It is so different. You know, it's one of these things where it, 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 you know, people think that a publicist like myself is not on board for pay to play or sponsorships or things like that. And that couldn't be further from the truth. I can't speak for other publicists, but for me, it's a very well-rounded approach for all wedding pros to consider and wedding brands because they're a little bit different. You know, the the larger tech brands and B2B services versus the solopreneurs, you you, you just have different goals. But if you want to get the word out there, it's not just about real wedding features or being quoted in something. It's, It's also so putting your money where your mouth is and, and sponsoring things and things that you believe in and, and putting money into the media as well. You know, if I was a wedding pro in a particular region, I would, you know, I would focus on the PR aspect of publicity as much as what advertising made sense, you know, for me. And I do put my money where my mouth is, you know, I do have an advertising budget. I do sponsor things. I do a lot of my own, you know, kind of things as well. And when I work with some of these bigger corporate brands, we always make sure before they even sign on the dotted line with us, we're very clear. Listen, we'll do the PR side, but there's an absolute value to some of these very specific, you know, uh, sponsored posts and paying and all that. And I think, and I think the other side of it, it was tough because it's kind of like, you've got these wonderful editors who may say, well, you have to pit you like, I will not feature you unless you're an advertiser. But for a lot of these guys, these solopreneurs, I mean, you can't, one, it's impossible to put $400 into every single blog that you ever submit to. It's very expensive. And if you don't have any, any test of kind of that ROI originally before you pay, that's a tough one. I mean, you and I yeah. both know you don't spend money without testing the waters first. So it's kind of this cyclical, interesting time right now yeah. in the audience, you know, in the audience, among our audience in the media as well. But yeah, you're right. It's a very different world. And, and you know, it, we're just kind of, like you said, you have to evolve. Like there's just no way around it. I, I Some people come to me practically too late. You know what yep. I mean? It's like they're, their their stuff is so outdated. They they can't even do the PR because their website is still in flash. And it's like, whoa, we we've got so many bigger fish to fry, if you will, yeah. before we jump into your features. <laughs> yeah. so you said two really good things that I want to go off on a tangent for a minute. Um, so for those of you listening, I'm sure you've heard of a sponsored post, but I don't know if you actually understand, and I'm going to be honest here because I didn't get it until one day I'm in this business group and it, I'm not part of a whole lot of like wedding groups anymore unless they're true entrepreneur groups. So I'm in this group, this was a few months ago, and one of the new members, she has a panty subscription line. And she was telling me we were going around and talking about advertising and budgeting dollars and what we allocate towards platforms. And she said, well, I just, we pay one influencer a month and, Mm -hmm. um, that's what all we do. And several Mm -hmm. people in the room, they're like, well, what do you mean? And she said, well, my business coach told me that I was going to pay this one influencer that was really well known in a positive way in, in lingerie brands. She had three and a half million followers. She charges $14,000 a post. Woo! And mm-hmm. so he said, we're going to send her some of your panties and we're going to pay her for one post. And, you know, the girl was like, you're crazy. And he's like, no, no, you're crazy. Let me teach you to reframe. He said, honey, they have 3.5 million followers. And by the way, they're real followers. They're not, pay- they're not bought. They're not paid. Mm-hmm. And they, he has a company that goes through and reads comments to make sure, I, I don't know how the hell you tell if they're bots or not, which the, the, the bot thing is a whole nother conversation. But, but um, he said, if we convert 10% of 
her following, that will make you over $100,000 in a month if people subscribe to your $13 a month penny subscription. And so they end up ended up converting 13% the first month. So why mm-hmm. would you do anything else, I guess? Yeah, no, it makes sense. No. And you're looking at it from a couple different ways. It's like sponsored posts can mean exactly that. It's like paying an influencer who has like legit followers, engagement, all this. But then on the other side too, it could also be a really great wedding blog that hits mm-hmm. your direct audience. Maybe it's a niche and you can pay three or $400, but that, you know, you partner to do a really creative, educational something sort of post that's not too salesy and you could see a return on that. So I guess it's so funny because that that's not because I focus primarily on earned in media. That's there's no payment, you know, between the mm-hmm. two. But what I find is, especially with the bigger brands, you need a little bit more budget and you can diversify. There's still a lot of value to that. I mean, I, I wouldn't hesitate to, you know, put my money where my mouth is under the right circumstances and put myself in front of other wedding pros in a position. And just like, I would hope that other wedding pros would feel the same if someone could offer them you know, a great, great opportunity. And of course with that, let's be completely like putting on our honesty pants here right now is, but there's also, there's like not legit sponsored, you know what right. I mean? Like we, we had this <laughs> we had this small bit. I shouldn't even be talking about this. No, this but, is we, but girl, let me go. Let me continue. Go. So, <laughs> I belong to this small business group in town, like where I'm located. And this bride writes, because anyone can be on it. It's not what all wedding people. And said, hey, y'all, I'm a full-time blogger and I'm getting married. I'd love to, you know, partner with some wedding pros in town. Now, she didn't say hire. She said partner. And a lot of the really new wedding pros jumped on and said, congratulations. I'd love to work with you. And it was very clear they thought they were going to get the business, but it was very clear to my, my little eye on the other side, she was looking for free everything, you know what I mean? And I have a big problem under the right circumstances. So I actually went on and I'm not one of these like, like, you know, stirring the pot kind of gals, but I went through her public metrics Mm -hmm. and pretty much squashed her and said, where do you get 25,000 followers? You have this many on Instagram and you have a 1% engagement Mm -hmm. rate. Like, can you be a little more, (laughs) she was not, I mean, Mm -hmm. she like private Facebook messaged me, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but I felt like, you know, some people show that they've got that, you know, following. And at the end of the day, it's like, it actually doesn't hash out. So for your audience, you know, it's important for them to remember that you really need to do your due diligence. I feel like a lot of people are anecdotal about their PR and marketing, like what's working and what's not. And as you said before, you said the magic word ROI, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's like, what are you getting for it? And don't just arbitrarily throw $300 at a directory listing if you're not sure, you know, relatively confident that it could be a good match for you. Yeah. And then you said another thing that just, oh my gosh, brings up so many good points. So about a website and like, um, so I have a great story about Wedding Wire and I was recently at a women's summit in Napa and I was talking to one of their former employees who was one of the top salespeople her mom is in this group that I'm in and she recently just started her own business. She's a very young entrepreneur and, um, you know, wedding wire did have a wonderful sales training and she learned a lot. Um, and it, it really inspired her to just start her own business. Mm -hmm. And she said one of the top complaints that people would give who were paying for a wedding wire listing that they would get, you know, let's just say a hundred leads a month and she, but they weren't booking anything. And she said, well, let me, you know, these were some of her clients she was telling me about. And she's like, I, I'm not really sure how to communicate to these people. And I'm like, well, what's up? Like what happened? And she's like, well, all the time, these people who've been in business for a really long time, they'll pay for a listing and then they'll get a hundred clicks and a hundred leads, but then they don't convert anything. And I Uh said, well, uh, time out, like you're doing, wedding wars doing their part, but Mm -hmm. the business owner has to have a few things in place, a responsive website that is mobile friendly and some CTAs that make sense, which is a call to action. So it's like you Mm -hmm. want a call to action in your When you're looking at your cell phone, you know, most people have iPhones or droids, you know, you want to make sure that before people scroll, they know what you do. And there's some type of a call to action button asking them to reach out. And Mm -hmm. so she's like, oh my gosh, like 
No one has that. They have these old websites. They're in Flash. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know what Flash is, it's <laughs> good. <laughs> I heard two iPhones. And it was like, I had a be- the most beautiful Flash website that like did all this fancy shit. And then it was like 25 <laughs> grand later. And two mm-hmm. years later, HTML came out, WordPress came out, iPhones came out, and you had to update. I mean, that was a long time ago, but we, knew, we remember those days. And, we do. you know, I told her, I said, so what is Wedding Wire doing to educate the business owner? Hey, we're doing our half. You've mm-hmm. got to do your half, meaning you've got to make sure you have a responsive website. You have to make sure that your website, your social media, your pictures, your listing, your brand makes mm-hmm. sense. And I felt like some actually pulled up some of the people that she was telling me they were complaining. And she's like, I don't even know how to tell them in a nice way. And I said, well, does Wedding Wire offer these services or do they partner with people? But if mm-hmm. it were me and I was a sales girl, which I know that you guys have to make a quota. And she's like, mm-hmm. yeah, we do. But I said, I wouldn't take them on as a client. I would say, mm-hmm. I, we can't do you justice until you have X, Y, Z. And so mm-hmm. you just hit it on the head by saying, I, from a PR perspective, we can't take on these clients unless they have the goods to yeah. support what you're trying to do for them. So, I mean, it's just a problem. Like people need to understand that, you know, we get these emails and people are like, do you know anybody that can redo my logo? Do you know anybody? Like, what do you think about this? What do you, and I'm like, oh my God, that's like, a, a tiny component of the big picture here of consistency yeah. of a brand. So if you can talk a little bit about that. No, absolutely. So like a lot a huge of people ask right me, I know it is in one of the things that, you know, I love talking about is, okay, I want to amp up my company. I'm ready to move it to the next, or I need more business, frankly, or the right business. And maybe they come to me and they might come in and we'll chat about their goals. But I have a laundry list of things that under certain circumstances, and I educate a lot on this too. And, and, you know, we talk about what do you need to do to prepare to start taking on PR because I'm not going to start working with someone and have them being on podcasts and speaking and, you know, being quoted on things. And then people click on the link and it's never going to convert because their site's a hot mess. It's outdated, their logo. So I tell people first and foremost, you know, there's tends to be a big chasm between people who say, well, this is the message I want to project about my company and then how people are actually perceiving it. You know what I mean? It's like, (laughs) you know, oh yeah, I'm, I'm hip and luxury or whatever. And someone looks at it and they're like, no, you're not. And, and so what you need to do is really dig in and have a good, honest look at like how you're being perceived. Even if you have to, and like you said, putting a great team together, I'd rather have someone not spend money on me, which makes me, I guess, a bad salesperson, but not spend money. It's good. I was like, don't spend money on me and then spend money on the right true graphic design team, web team. Like I joke, my husband was my designer, but he also was, he's been a web person for 20 years. He officially fired me after the last time we worked together <laughs> just because I just needed him too much. And so I put on my big girl pants and, and hired, you know, a great team to service both my sites, but, you know, making sure that that's where it needs to be, it's, especially as you head into engagement season, your, your booking season, you know, whatever that is, which it tends to be early. It's like Q1, but it, it does vary for people. So get that together. Make sure that your bio is updated. If you have press that it's updated, that it loads quickly. I mean, you know, it, it, those are things because at the end of the day, like why would I go speak at Wedding Wire World if all people did is they click on my site and they're like, oh, I don't even get what she does. You know what I mean? And so, and quick shout out to Wedding Wire too, because I think they've done a great job. I, I'm an education expert on they you know Allen Berg I'm with that guy all the yeah. time on all these conferences and they've done a great job pushing like sales and conversion but I think it brings up a good point of you know you, you can get people to put eyeballs on you but it's up to you to kind of convert and make sure that your sales is where it needs to be and the good news with the evolution of the wedding industry is we've seen a lot of really established people go ahead and say you know what I'm going to go ahead and and be an educator and, and some for better or for worse. Again, that's a conversation we can have in Vegas with wine, but for yeah. now it's like there are, when you kind of pick through some of the crap, you're going to find some really great, smart people who can help you get to where you need to go so that you're ready for publicity, advertising, you know, paying an influencer to put you on. So you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, I agree with you. It's a lot of digging in and it's something that, um, you know, right now I know my business model is different from wedding pros, but I do practice what I preach. You know, yes. I'm heading into speaking season, you know, yes, we've got wedding MBA coming up, but then 
you get, you hit the ground running in the new year. And so we're looking at all of our sites and logos and everything right now, just to make sure we're ship shape for, you know, when I'm put out on stage. So I, I practice it as well. So for what it's worth, I, and I agree with you hundred percent. Yeah. And so for, for those of you who are new in business, Q1 means quarter one, and there's typically mm-hmm. four quarters. And so like every December, the first week of every December, um, I started this maybe, I think this is our fifth year where I hired, I hired a brand strategist because I wanted to change the perception of what I wanted to offer to the industry. So I didn't want to do 200 events or weddings every year. It was killing me. And you can only grow so much where you get burnout on something. And I'm like, I really want to educate Um, especially with psychology and technology. Those are the two geeky things that I am most passionate about. And Mm -hmm. so it was a three-year commitment and a three-year strategy of putting out content and being consistent. And so he taught us either you, you do it in the month of December when you don't have a ton of events. If you do holiday events, you know, they're usually not as big and not like as important as a wedding where you get one shot and it has to be perfect, but Mm -hmm. holiday parties happen every year. And so taking the core team for a week and strategizing for the next year of creating consistent content. So we call it GSD retreat, like get shit done. (laughs) And you really want to think about, and we do, we look at the website, we look at the services, we look at the keywords and But before I hired a brand strategist, I didn't know to do any of that because the business was coming through word of mouth, but it wasn't Mm -hmm. the type of business that I actually wanted a year later to grow my company in the way that I wanted it to go. Yes. So once I had a strategist to help me, and by the way, for those of you who want to grow and learn and do different things, you're too close to it. Hire somebody (laughs) on the outside and- Listen you have to, to. <laughs> listen to them. People are in your friends and family can be great to like toss yeah. things off on, but they're too nice. They're yeah. too, they're like, no, this seems great. And you're just like, mm, you're just being super nice to me. Like that's not. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing I will say that's very enlightening is, um, I love, which I, I'm not a numbers girl. I, I don't like it at all. However, mm-hmm. we have made it really fun in with our team. So now there's things where we test a lot of things. So, Um, another speaker that I was speaking at a technology conference, he was talking about growth hacking and how the shape of the button and the text and what it says and Mm -hmm. how one can be more profitable than the other. And you can actually split test these things on like a lead pages or, you know, some type of testing where it's like, y'all, the numbers don't lie. And so while I think that like my girls will put up all these pictures and they're like, okay, which one do you like best? And I'm like, well, I like that picture best. And Mm -hmm. really I like that picture for emotional reasons because I loved the bride (laughs) and I loved her parents and it was so much fun. And then I'll look at another picture and I'm like, oh, well that client was kind of like not my perfect client or ideal client. And like, I couldn't wait for it to be over. And so I don't like that picture, but then they'll run a split test and I always lose. So, yeah, <laughs> and, but the numbers don't lie, and so no, they don't. You gotta take You're the right. emotions out of it and mm-hmm. listen to what the data and what the professionals who do this every day are saying. Um, and there's this really great book. I don't know. Have you ever read the Lean, the Lean Startup before? Or have you heard of that before? I have, but I have the, not. Listened it's to a it. great book, and it's an unfortunate title only because people think, "Well, I'm not a startup. I've been doing this five, ten, fifteen mm-hmm. years," and and it's not about that. So what it is is the idea of you have an idea. Maybe you have a successful company, but you want to do a, an alternative. Maybe you want to start a podcast, things like that. And to us, it, we're very anecdotal. It seems like a great idea. Far too many people will go out out there and just start something without the testing side of it. And then some people luck out and it works out and some people, you know, they bet on themselves and that's great. And sometimes it, it's a, you know, falls apart. And so yeah. it's an easy, you know, it's a great book to have handy. I got it when I decided I started a year and a half ago, a wedding peer membership, the idea of like small business solutions, so instead of paying for like the big retainer, we, you press leads coming in, blah, blah, blah. Like we don't have to get into it now, but I had an idea, like light bulb yeah. went off and I thought this sounds great. I see a need for it, but you know what? It was all anecdotal. So we went ahead and got 50 beta testers, people I did not know from all over the U S through our mutual friends, like people put 
kindly posted in their, their group. And we ran a test and said, these are the things we're thinking of, da, 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 da. And, and, and we would trade them for like three months of the membership when it went live. And every single point I thought was a good idea was tested and everyone said, yep, no, I'd pay for this. I love this. Except for um, there, our top tier is like a real wedding submission tier. And it was, it was quite a bit, but it was what people were, we were charging all ready. No one was on board with it, but I, that was the only thing people fought me on. I thought, no, I know better than the rest of you. I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, what did I do after I, I launched it? Cause I mean, I, I, I'm very open about it. I mean, it was thousands of dollars yeah. to launch. It was, it was about $10,000 yeah. total. And I don't mind sharing that with people. Like it was an investment and that's yep. not easy money for me. Just like pull out of my couch cushions. And so I did that and it was funny cause it launches, it does well. And then after a year, the one part of it I've changed is the, um, the top tier. I went ahead and cut it in half, but I cut the services in half and that's now our, it's like just like the people in the test told me to do, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I was like, no girl, I got it. You know, but it's really, that book is wonderful. So anyone, even if you're thinking, oh, I want to be a mentor, I want to do this, like read the book and test. There's, it yes. grows smartly, not all over the place. You yes. know, it's not, you, you're not going to hit gold every time. No. So. Well, and so that brings me to another good question. Like I know that a lot of us used to submit like these real weddings mm -hmm. and you know, they would just get picked up and get featured. And then there was two bright lights and you could put everything on there. Mm -hmm. And, um, I would say, especially with us being educators, like it's funny. Cause I'm like, I don't want a bunch of real weddings out there. Like that's fine. If my brides want that, but sure. if, if you want to be seen as an educator, be mm -hmm. having all these real weddings out there of what you plan, that's just going to bring you more <laughs> real wedding. Yeah. And, and the thing is, funny. I will say the real weddings do, and people will say, does this still work? And I'll say, yes. And I know I'm biased because I'm in PR, but you know, Google's one of the top ways couples are going to find their wedding course. We see that statistically every single year in, in reports, Blended Insights does it. And so you're getting strong links back to your site. And then if you're doing it right, you're putting your, your work and it's that repeat exposure effect in front of the right audience. So it does work, but you're right on the B2B side. It's so funny. It was about four years ago. All I did was like real wedding features and quotes. And then people started coming to me and saying, well, Megan, you have an audience of wedding pros. I want that audience. And I went, Oh my God, like I should buy you a cake or something. That's such a, or some why am I? Whoopie <laughs> yeah. Oh, but yes. Thank you very much. Whoopie pie. It's like, well, little shout out to uh, New England there and my, my roots there. But I, so I started like this kind of a different branch of the company where we offer B2B industry PR because more educators are coming out there. And in it, just like you were saying before, I realized like I'm heading into, what was it like three or four years ago, I was heading into speaking season, but nowhere on my site does it say I do industry PR. <laughs> so I had to go and like update it. So I practice what I preach, but you're right. Like you need for your listeners to have an interest in being on that like industry B2B side. It's not about the real wedding features. It's about the guest columns and, and, you know, speaking and webinars and podcasts. So I agree with you. I mean, it's a totally different beast you have to you really have to have a custom plan when you want to do something like that yeah it's it's funny because like it seems so stinking simple to just tell people what you want ask them what they want and they will tell you and then you communicate and you deliver and I mean, just the other day we were talking about, um, going through our services again and somehow through word of mouth, because I've done some weddings at some of these resorts and then they're like, so how is everyone like so happy? And I'm like, oh, we use this psychology methodology that I learned when I worked in the psych ward. It's called true colors and da, 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 da. And they're like, well, can you come teach that? Like, can you share that with our team? And do you do, do you have a sales training package? And I'm like, wait, I'm here to do a wedding. So <laughs> I'm like, I can put that hat on, but like, let me get through uh -huh. this first. And so yeah. then the girl that, that like is one of our strategists, she's like, that's not even on your website, Angela. <laughs> like, and, I mean, I do <laughs> teach, like, like true yeah. colors a lot. And it is one of the psychological strategies that we were, I mean, you have to go to their university and pay five grand and get trained mm -hmm. and, you know, to be a certified facilitator. And I'm like, so pissed that I had to like go and do all that. But then after I did it, I'm like, oh my God, this was the best thing ever. This was the best investment ever. Cause it yeah. taught me so much about how to help others and have, you know, half planning be half the revenue and the other half being 
you know, the education, yes. um, which is long-term like with the webinars and the podcast and people can always go back and listen. Um, which I, again, like if you have a strategy to bring in weddings, that's great. But like, what's your strategy for long-term growth? Yes. And a lot of I know think about that. <laughs> I would love somebody, and maybe there are people out there doing this, but I would love to see more people who can success Successfully speak on this, not just, I mean, like real legit talk about creating an exit strategy because I see now that I've been doing this 15 years, which is not a ton of time, but then as my 24, 25 year old employee told me, yes, that is a long time. I'm like, oh my God, no, well, you fired. No, I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> I see too many people who are maybe they're in their 50s. I'm just making that, but the, or it could be like they're poor. I mean, they just don't want to be gone every weekend and, and physically, you know, they don't want to be 14 hours racing around on every Saturday. Day. And, and it, you know, of course, like a lot of people, it's human nature. It doesn't occur to them when you're 24 or 25 or 32 and you set up shop that that's not what you want to do forever. And then it catches people by surprise. So you're right. Like you, what is the Isaac strategy in the long run? I mean, uh, you know, how do you diversify that you can sing the industry, but without losing every weekend, if you don't want, you know, some people do it and they do a great job at it. But I wish more people, I wish, you know, someone could speak on that because I think people need to hear that so they don't feel stuck when they're 55 and they're not sure what to do, you know? Yeah. I don't think like, because those of us who, you know, in the wedding industry, it's, it's like fun and exciting and the adrenaline and my God, if I had a dollar for every time someone said like, what drugs do you take? Or like, what are you on? Like, how do you stay so happy? And I'm like, why does, why do people think that? Like, that's terrible. Yeah, I get that. Like if I have a headache, I take Excedrin, but like, I don't love coffee. I don't love to drink it, but like my clients truly do make me happy on the business side and the wedding and event side. Um, and which is a good segue into like, and you said it earlier how it's so oversaturated, but it's like more and more event professionals, like they're mm -hmm. exploring the whole like B2B, which is business yes. to business like press space. And so, you know, they're pitching themselves for speaking engagements. And mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but like, I mean, so much sponsored stuff comes across Instagram and mm -hmm. I'll, you know, click on it and I'm like, Oh, well, you know, what are they teaching? What are they doing? Is this, because I love to collaborate with educators. It's much more fun to do it with people. Yes. Yeah. 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 Have a long history. And then I do a little bit of digging and I'm like, they've only been in business for a year and they've only been in <laughs> and I'm like, you and I just have to have a really long, like get together wedding NBA. I feel like yeah, I'm just like, I'm sorry. Like, I don't mean to be a bitch, but like, how are you qualified <laughs> to effing, yeah. get up on stage and teach people? And I have a real problem, which I don't say the word problem a lot challenge. I usually use that, but I, I truly have a problem with people thinking that they can get up there and be a leader and teach others when they haven't even done it themselves. I know. And, I mean, I posted, hard. I posted, I'm like all into these quotes and on Instagram the other day, that was like one of my little quotes. I'm like, don't let anybody tell you how to do it. If they haven't done it themselves. Like, I agree with you. But I also say, this is controversial a little bit, I'm gonna say, but I also think it's the responsibility of the people like, yes, it is misleading when someone does it. But I would also, if I was the one investing in this coach, mentor, whatever, like I feel like it's my responsibility equally to really like grill this person and be like, well, do you really know your stuff or are you, <laughs> yeah. do you have a really great website? There's a difference, you uh -huh. know? <laughs> yeah. Experience versus having the capital to put the money into nice things. That's two different mm -hmm. things. It's totally different things. Absolutely. You can't read a book or go to any college and get the education you're going to get with experience and hands-on training. Well, that's the big thing on on our side too, I'll say, and, and I, you know, there's so few of us who do wedding care. There's only about a dozen of us anywhere who really exclusively are like, and even that a lot of people kind of do wedding and lifestyle. And for me, we're just all weddings all the time. And one thing I'm really proud about is, you know, I was in the industry now, granted it was about six, six and a half years. So it was not like I made a career of it out of respect to the people who do. And then half of our team all been in the wedding industry. Cause, and I think that helps because there's a better understanding of, yeah, I'm not going to ask for a quote last minute on a Friday in the middle of the wedding season. And I can help, you know, pull people's answers out of them because I was on the ground. And I think there's something to that, you know, we're really proud of that at OFD that we're like, let's 
listen, we were, we have been in the trenches with you. And, and you're right, as more people kind of expand to B2B, I, I think there needs to be on both sides, like there should be, I wish it was more honest communication, but I also think that you should be, you know, you should, I don't say leery because I don't want to seem negative, but you should do your diligence before you hire somebody. You know, I, I work with a great, um, I stink at numbers and I work with Michelle at Stage Wedding Pro. She does all my like financial forecasting and, and she's a, some of the best money I've ever spent for my company. But I, you know, I made sure it was that before I made the investment. I thought she knows the wedding industry and she has the things to back her up. And I think it's important on both sides, but yeah, I know I would say next five years expect just, I mean, as someone who sits on education committees for NACE and I grade other conferences like talks and stuff, I, not my own, unfortunately, <laughs> I wish I a plus for that girl, but I, I, it is overwhelming how many speakers are coming into the market. You know what I mean? And speakers I use with air quotes because some of them are like amazing and legit and real up and comers. And then some people are like, I mean, I don't know. They've been doing this five seconds. So it's hard, yeah. you know? Yeah. Or would you say like your top tip is like, do your homework peeps? <laughs> Yeah, I know. Do your homework. I would say, okay, top three, top, let's do a top three kind of like PR tips yeah. and, and life, life tips. No, I it might be a mix of them. First and foremost, like before, before you go out and decide to, like, yeah, I want to do PR and stuff, make sure that the message you want to get out about your company or in the company you work for, whatever your situation is, truly is the message being out there. You know, that website and that social media and all of those, like just make sure. And that you've got that strong handle on goals and where you want to go. Because if I chat with someone, they want to do PR, but they don't see the big picture of what two years, five years, 10 years looks like. It's a harder, you know, it's a harder collaboration. We have a few more steps. It takes us one, two, absolutely do your due diligence. Like I, I would say that's a big thing. And that's anytime you're, you're, bringing in other trusted team members. And like you, you know, Angela said at the beginning here, it, it took a while to get that team. And I would agree with you on that. So just make sure when you're looking for the right publicist, I always say this, like when, again, probably makes me a terrible salesperson because sometimes I'll come to them and say, Hey, listen, I'm not the right person for you, but this, these guys might be, and they appreciate the honesty, but you know, make sure their most current relationships are a match for where you want to be. If you're like, listen, I want to really be in vogue. And because we've been placed in vogue a handful of times in the last year, but if it had been a bunch of years or only once, I mean, you need to be mindful of that because one time does not make, make an editorial relationship with Absolutely vogue. It takes, it takes a while to massage that, you know, or on the B2B side, if someone came and wanted to be in cater source and what do we do and special events, like it would take the right person to say, yeah, here's our placements there. So do your due diligence on that. And I would say the last thing is, you know, put yourself out there. I think I get a lot of people when I speak, come up to me and lament and say, you know, I've got, I've got these, oh, these people in my market are just like me, but they only have one year of experience and seem to be quoted and everything or vice versa. Or maybe like, I've got a good friend who's a planner and yeah, I'm happy for him, but I'm kind of equally annoyed that I'm not being quoted. And I always say, you know, the number one thing, a lot of them don't have publicists. The number one thing they're doing is they're putting them themselves out there and they're not afraid of the word no. I just, uh, we just got picked up from Martha Stewart Weddings. Like we do a lot with them on the content side, but the real wedding side, we actually just got our first feature, which is probably after 10 Yay. years, not, thanks, not <laughs> impressive to a lot of your audience. Like, wow, it took you 10 years. And I, I, honestly, it probably took 25 no's. It took 25 no's to get a yes from them. But we, we kept up with it over the years and we tried to be thoughtful about it and you have to have thick skin. So I would say those are my like three kind of PR related slash life tips for the audience. Yeah. Persistence. Like, and yes, passion. but not with, without being annoying about it. And also, like you said, understanding the audience, like you cannot pitch to a podcast. Like we, we pitch to you and we yeah. make sure I mean, I listen to you. We're not going to just jump in and pitch something that you just covered. You know, that's a big part of it for us. So, you know, do your due diligence ahead of time. Absolutely. Yeah. So what are your thoughts? Like how important are industry awards these days? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I, I am literally in the throes of industry. And when I say industry award, you know, for me, that's more like among my peers, the WIP awards, special event gala awards, you mm -hmm. has awards. I can't really speak to the not wedding wire awards because those are, they have their own reasons for existing and it's controversial to some people. And, and it is what it is like it, with those, I would say guys, you know, two things as here's a one is how are people really getting it? Like, should you really get bent out of shape because you don't get it And two, the honest question of 
do your couples know the difference? Because some people blindly like do not want to get any of those like not wedding wire things. I'm like, yeah, but I know you're against them, but does your couples know the difference in it? Like be mindful of that. But on the industry, yeah, on the industry side though, I really think if you can put yourself out there in a way like it, there's just so many great reasons to try for awards you know it's the it's the recognition it's you're in this terrible you know millions of other planners venues whatever and you need to stand out from your competition and i gotta tell you guys those with only one two three um you know maybe i would say one two three years of experience don't have the portfolio to submit so go after that you know brass ring and go for it it's also great for your team it like kind of lifts you all like we've won um this year we won a couple of pr awards and the whole team got dressed up and i paid Yay! for them to go yeah, yeah thanks <laughs> and they were so excited yeah. so that but also your vendor team i mean you and i both know it, mm -hmm. google's a great way to get leads but also your fellow wedding professionals and so if you guys win an award like maybe you're the planner and you submit and you guys win but like the whole team gets the recognition they're going to remember that about you so i think if you can carve out we're talking like i mean gosh anywhere from 99 bucks some of them are free to 125 bucks put it as part of your your marketing plan and you know try it and just you know try a couple of years of it and see i think there's it puts a feather in your cap and it and now more than ever, statistically, couples are reviewing your site at length and reviewing your brand before they talk to you. So they want to see that you're award winning. I mean, I'll be complete, like, Angela, I'm going to be legit right now and tell you something I shouldn't tell people. But I started pursuing awards a few years ago because, I, you know, I've had people leave my company and start competing firms, which is like a tale as old as time. Uh -huh. You know, now I've got, I've got legalese in place to avoid that. But I thought to myself, you know, there are more people in general. This wasn't a response to just one thing happening, but it, it really hit me that more people are trying to jump into this wedding PR space, which is great because there's like – few of us but I really had the portfolio to get like get actual awards and I wanted to pursue it and it's turned out to be a really great you know to say we're award-winning means something to people I'd like to think so yeah absolutely awesome. I'm on board mm -hmm. and it is I will say um you know some people see it because I've heard some you know, fellow wedding planners say oh my god it's so much work and there's so much paperwork and blah 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 and I'm like well, I mean, if you're not going to put the work in, I mean, it's just like planning a wedding or an event. Like it's a lot of effing work, you know? So yeah, but, it is nice. <laughs> but ROI, I'm like, you know, if you're able to put it in and let people know uh -huh. that you're running for that or you're trying for it again, it will set you apart. And then if you do win, it's like, what do you do with that message? And how, how can you, leverage that so that you do stand out from, yeah. from other people. And I'll tell you right now, as someone who has graded some industry rewards, and I am not here to speak on behalf of any of the industry rewards. It doesn't matter which ones I've graded for, but I have been judged in a bunch of, like I've been a judge in a few of them. And believe it or not, this isn't for every, this is not all of them, but a lot of the time people are, are surprised when I say this, not as many people submit as you may think like your chances are a lot better than you may yeah. think in a lot of them and so it's a matter of as soon as the call for submission comes out if you can get organized and ship away even in the middle of the busy season it is doable to, yeah. to get it out there and once you do it once you may be able to repeat that event for a couple different industry awards so I'm a big fan I like I went to cater stores this year and talked for like 70 minutes on that wow. about award submissions yeah I'm a big fan that's awesome mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So tell our, our listeners, like, what's the best tip for like connecting and creating relationships, like with the wedding media, sure. like how, what's the first step? First step is cyber stalking. <laughs> no, no. Social media has made, it been one of the most impactful inventions in the last X amount of years in public relations. And because there's an authenticity created because you get to know people. Like before, 10, 15, 20 years ago, all you had was an email, maybe a fax number, a mailing address. Maybe you didn't want to be called. And so what, what you need to do, the number one tip here is – if you have people that you admire their work and you feel that you authentically, after reading five to 10 articles, that you could be a great expert for them, that you have some cool ideas based on, like story ideas based on, maybe follow some at brides.com and you're like, you know, they're really get, dig into the real life of like dynamics of families with weddings. I love what they're doing. I have a few ideas. Sit down 
you know, follow them on social media in a way that's not creepy. Like don't friend them on Facebook, but follow them on Instagram if it's not private and get to know them as people and then craft a pitch. And I could go on about this forever, but really get to know them as people. And then over time, consider crafting a pitch that is, you know, authentic. I've gotten to know you. I really think that we could partner up on a great article. Like this is my idea. I've got to say some of my favorite people are freelancers that we've bonded over, you know, working from home, our love of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's wedding, like, so, you know, cats. So you just get to know them as people. That's the best thing you can do is get to know them as people and don't pitch the minute you find their email address. Like really, it's a relationship. Take your time. Yeah, that's awesome. You've given so much awesome. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> like awesome. So Thank you. For people who need help with like PR, tell our listeners where they can find you and what would be the first step in knowing if they are a good fit for you. Absolutely. You know, I'd send people to OFDConsulting.com first. I think that's first and foremost, because that's really like the hub of what we do. And it's where we dive into like, you know, the, the retainers. And if you want to really level up and whether it's in front of your peers, whether you want to be in front of wedding, like your couples and whatnot. And then there's also, you know, it can redirect you to the OFD collective if that's the right solution for you. So check it out over there. We're always posting it in Instagram, OFD Consulting. My contact information's on the site too. And yeah, you know, we we're at a lot of the national conferences. So keep an eye out for me. Um, I'm a wedding wear education expert. So you can see me at all those as well. Just, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. And, um, that's the best spots to find me. Yeah. I love that you keep your website up to date and relevant. Um, oh, because despite my husband ditching me, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, doesn't it save you a ton of time though? I mean, if yes. you, if you just put, guys put your information out there in like the top 10 questions that you get asked the most, if those answers are not on your website or if it's not on your blog, put it there and yes. send people there. And that drives organic traffic to your website. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It really does. And yeah, I try to put everything I can there because at the end of the day, who has time for too much pre-qualification? So just like I, I hope people take a page out of my book as well. Like I put what we're looking for, you know, we put what we can with frequently asked questions so that when they come to me, they're, you know, we, we're very fortunate that we have a, a high conversion rate. And I think it's because by the time people get to us, they have a good understanding, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Megan. Really my pleasure. It's been so much. I could probably talk to you for three more right. hours. <laughs> Not that the listeners would like continue on with us. We'll have to do it again. We could do a step part two. <laughs> but guys, make yeah. sure that y'all visit OFDconsulting.com and make sure that you start thinking about your future and how you want to grow your company. Don't live just in the now. You really want to plan for your future. So check out Megan's website and everybody have a great day. Thanks so much for listening to Weddings Unveiled and be sure to tune in next time. Bye. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with your friends. And I'm so very grateful if you will leave a review. Be sure you are a subscriber so you never ever miss the juicy details of Weddings Unveiled. Also, be sure that you're a part of my email list, and if not, you can sign up at AngelaProfit.com where I share valuable resources and exclusive products with only my subscribers. Before I go, I want to ask you, if you have a story or a product to share with the wedding and event industry, please let me know. To be considered as a guest on Weddings Unveiled, visit AngelaProfit.com and submit a podcast guest form. Until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.